All right, all right. Thank you so much for returning to Resource Rundown. This time we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of these e-com business models. I know some of you all heard about e-com, e-com this and e-com that. Basically, we've got some individuals out here, many of them, who they have their own websites and they are selling all sorts of merch from their website. Shopify right now at the time of this recording is hot, hot, hot. And many of my small business owners that I've talked to um, working at other companies have just said a whole lot of cool things about Shopify. Um, but we want to talk about the, the business models today. Like if you're the person who's wishing to quit your job and you're wishing to, you know, do what you see so many other people do, you know, what am I jumping into? Well, you're jumping into a whole lot of things that are unfortunately going to disappoint you in the beginning before you get the win-wins. I've personally tried some of this stuff myself and I'm like, okay, how much money am I willing to invest in all of this? And when am I going to get returns? And I'll tell you in the past, some of this stuff that I have got myself involved in over the years, I didn't end up seeing profits until like five years, literally five years later, nine years later, six years later, because of these algorithms, the search engine, when you have money to invest in paid advertising, the bumps along the way. I mean, so, you know, money is there, but hmm, how much is it really? So drop shipping. When we think about drop shipping, we're going to think about things like contacting wholesalers directly, starting up the website, which many of my small business owners over the years, they have done. We're going to think about things like low profit margins, less money to advertise because, hey, if we spend a whole lot of money when it comes to um, advertising, we're going to end up having low profit. Um, we're going to think about things like handling customer service, um, you know, do we want to do that or not, right? So the drop shipping is going to take care of all of that for us. We won't have to worry about managing stock inventory. We won't have to worry about depending on um, the vendors and all that. Drop shipping is just what it is. I got the sale. Now all I'm going to do is transfer that sale over to the company that is going to package up everything. And then I get profit from that. The problem though is once again, that's a low profit. I mean, these companies that, hey, we're doing everything for you, but yeah, and they're giving us literally like less money than I've seen in, in a long time. I know that I've seen like dollars and cents, you know, a few dollars here, a few dollars there, you know, it's nothing for me to go, wow, everybody, let's just quit jobs, even though people want you to keep coming to their YouTube channel. So they're gonna say a whole lot of stuff um about yes made 23,000 they didn't always listen they didn't make the 23,000 they didn't make the 8,000 they didn't make the 15 or whatever they're bragging about they always talk about what people what people make what did I personally make I personally made when I was with eBay um full time was you know a thousand dollars in three days and somebody goes oh okay you know and then another a few hundred dollars is over within um so many hours okay yeah but that money wasn't always coming in consistently like that those were those moments where you go wow i did it but i never took my little victories that i got and then created all of these various videos and wrote articles talking about how much of a success and how much you're going to be a success. That's that kind of stuff right there. That's shady. That's deceptive. And I'm tired of it. And so I am not going to recommend any of these YouTubers who do that sort of thing. Mm -mm. Nope. I only want the real people who have real, you know, stories of, yeah, I made $5 here, $10 there, or I made $20 there. Let's just be real about these things. You know, some of these people got day jobs and they're making quite a bit of money with their day job. And then they take partial proceeds of their day job and they put it into their business. And then, of course, their business is going to do really well. He who has the deep pockets is winning. OK, he who has the deep pockets is winning. It's just like with a presidential candidate, old school model, right? It's always about you have 
a lot of money, you have a lot of pool, you have a lot of connections, and you just happen to be on the ballot and everybody knows your name. But what about these other people? Yeah, because they didn't have the deep pockets and because they, you know, don't have all of the connections. And so everybody knows something about um, the other person, but they don't know anything about you, right? The no name on the ballot. So, yeah. yeah. This is what's going on. So if you have your day job, you take partial proceeds and you put it into your business, but that is the way it goes. Not this, oh, we're just gonna quit one day and then hope and pray that we're going to have some money. And then meanwhile, your family members are looking at you like, um, yes, so you, what, what's going on here? Yeah, exactly. eBay, Amazon arbitrage. Now this is where a lot of folks get involved with this. Um, and yeah, there's, there's some issues. Um, items will show up on Amazon. Okay. There's this copyright trademark infringement business that goes on. You can get your account banned and you're constantly searching for new things to put up on, you know, your, your eBay account. Right. And then of course you got low margins and there's like no startup costs, but that's nice. <laughs> But you see, the thing is, is that I hate to be that one that's like the negative Nancy, but I am going to be that way when I know that people are being hustled by these courses that are out here to teach you this stuff. And then when something happens and you get banned or you get a copyright strike or you're some type of trademark infringement, where are those people? Where are your teachers? Huh? Can you sue your teachers? The ones who have these courses? Mm -hmm. See, you told me you said some of these people are learning the hard way. You see, because we're going to treat them just like we would a corporate entity. Okay, you claim that I can get this and that benefit, and then you turn around and you say that I can't get that benefit. And now let's let's just go ahead on and let's just talk about some things, shall we? You know, about me getting my money back, about, you know, <laughs> your course is just not good. So these sorts of things happen. And um, you just got to be ready. You got to be ready. Retail arbitrage. This is definitely not a good idea. And there was one particular individual. He basically changed his entire YouTube channel where he's not even talking about retail arbitrage anymore. He's talking about some news um, that's going on in media that we already know about. But he phrases it in such a way where, you know, it draws you in and it sounds nice. And he's like one of us type of thing. But he, you know, cleaned himself up, got all, you know, decked out looking like a news anchor. <laughs> and I absolutely, over the years, just loved him when he was telling us about retail arbitrage. Absolutely. But then found out a lot of stuff, you know, about this sort of thing. I even myself back in the day had bought some liquidated goods and so forth. And I told you in another audio, didn't make didn't make uh, the kind of money I wanted to because some of the um, the products, unfortunately, were broke when they showed up. And you can't do anything with broke products. But anyway, so you basically buy liquidation from retail stores and then you list these items on Amazon. Um, and then, of course, now Amazon is preventing sellers to sell branded items. So, you know. It's always something, always something. Um, there's the drop shipping that's involved when it comes to um, Amazon. And over the years, yes, this was something that worked. And then it all depends on how successful, I guess, you are at it. Um, so basically, this is where you drop ship some goods directly to Amazon. Um, they don't use um, FBA. I know some of you all have heard about this in the courses and all of that. You can look into more of that. I won't be getting into Amazon FBA, but there's no startup costs when people drop ship on Amazon. Items go out of stock though. And that is a problem because if you're on another platform and you're telling people that you got the goods and then I give you my money and then you tell me you don't have it, uh-huh, we have a problem. So you can get banned though because you can't fulfill the orders. And so, of course, it's a very competitive market, and it is. So you have these sorts of things that are out here. I'm telling individuals that, you know, I'm okay with the drop shipping um, when you're dealing with the wholesale suppliers directly, right? And they have this, like, little system in place. What I'm not in support of is when the items end up not being available, and then you tell me something like, 
oh, it's going to take about a week or two weeks or three weeks. Like there's a product right now that I ordered back in April 24th. And guess what? It is now somewhere around May that I'm recording this and I still don't have that product. Okay. So people, they come up with all sorts of ways of selling some items, but then they don't think about you're going to get negative feedback because <laughs> you're supposed to be having this product. You claimed you had the product and now you don't. Then, of course, there's private label goods, right? Now, this right here, I watched an individual. He literally saw a product that uh, was on another website, and then he showed where you could get this product on one of those um, um, wholesale supplier type of uh, websites. And then what he did was he um, showed how he created his logo, and he said that once his products showed up, he was going to put his logo on there. Um, and then... There was, um, there was also uh, where he would have it already printed when it showed up too from another supplier. So you see, with the private label goods, you're gonna look for a manufacturer and then they're going to ship your goods to Amazon FBA, right? So that the Amazon can fulfill uh, this. And then um, you're gonna need though, of course, before all this gets started, you're gonna need about $1,000 or so because you need to get this this um, item into the hands of some individuals. Um, the products you can get from overseas, and then of course though, the, I mean, if there's a defect or there's some issue with the product or whatever, Amazon can ban it at any time. So the, the benefit is, is that you just have your own brand, like the gentleman who went on and he got his logo done and then he made arrangements for a company to already print it and put it on there. And then before, um, before that, he was already putting his little brand on some products, right? But there are high profit margins when you, um, you know, get into, uh, you know, some of these things where, look, I just want to put my own brand together, have my own label and not deal with all of this other stuff. And this is why some individuals have their own website because they don't like the terms and the conditions and the rules of all these other websites that say, yes, come, come to our platform. We're going to, you know, sell your items for you and all that. But meanwhile, you're paying for your own advertising that is going back to their website and you are paying for uh, your product to be printed from whoever they are partnered up with and then they're charging you an arm and a leg see some of these individuals on etsy i was asking myself i'm like well wait a minute how are they able to get these t-shirts for under ten dollars they're dealing with the um, wholesale distributors they're they are buying uh, in bulk <laughs> they're buying in bulk but they're getting these uh, t-shirts at such a reasonable low rate so that they can afford to have t-shirts for you know as low as they are and some people they can't afford to do it it's just lost leaders and it's beating a competition and trying to get out there far enough where okay now i can start upping the price on my t-shirts or whatever else that i'm selling uh next point there are those wholesale products that are out there that you can list on amazon via fba um, you can also list them on other places as well. There are some people who they're not even doing all of that. They're just doing Facebook Marketplace. They got the products right there in the garage, in the basement, in the attic. <laughs> and, you know, just doing it like that, which I personally have done that with my used goods. So, you know, it is what it is. It's what is good for you, what you can handle, what you can deal with. Um, if you do decide to go with uh, wholesale products, there is a minimum order usually, which is in the hundreds. And a lot of these products are very competitive. That's why people have all these spy tools. Yes, there are spy tools out there to peek in on the competition. There are also uh, various um, sites out there where you can find out what is the latest, the best, the trending, you know, what is selling, all of that good stuff. I know on eBay, there's Terapeak eBay, Terapeak, T-E-R-A-P-E-A-K. And then you can take a look and see, just plug in whatever it is, of course, that you're curious about if it's going to sell. And then um, if it's selling, then of course, you might want to ride the gravy train just like everybody else. But if you don't see any, any type of movement whatsoever, that means that nine times out of 10, that product is out of season. Okay. It's not a product that is good right now. 
Um, it might not ever be good, but I know that a lot of products, there are seasons when um, it's the best time to purchase a product, which I get into in my book, um, that uh, is Black Friday, Cyber Monday strategies you can use year round, which is available on Amazon. And I tell you exactly what the seasons are for some of these products. This way, you're not that one who's just randomly putting up any old product and seeing what's going to stick on the wall. Um, now, the thing about selling wholesale products is that there is that price decrease that will happen, right? Because oh, once somebody uses their spy tool and finds out that you're sitting over there all nice and comfortable, you want to sit on your money pal, they're going to come and they're going to do what? And some of you all, you know, this has happened to you. I know it happened to me. They're going to go and they're going to make that price so low, right? That you can't make profit, okay? And some of these products... Um, the, the people who have created the products, they want a certain price out there. And so you can actually um, have your account banned. Um, you can be reported. A lot of things can happen if you're that one that wants to, um, you know, undercut everybody. So it is easy to start up, you know, in terms of selling wholesale products. The profit is good. I will say that. But, you know, like everything else, there's a risk involved. Then, of course, we've got our share uh, selling wholesale products on our own website, and we can do that. We can handle our own inventory. There are those minimum orders um, right here in the good old U.S. of A. Um, like I said, it's usually around the hundreds. I've taken a look at some of these uh, various companies and so forth. You are going to need to have to find that your share of wholesalers. You will need to have to pay for ads, as I mentioned. Um, and yes, it is competitive. Um, because everybody is doing pretty much the same thing nowadays. It's like, okay, so you found a great product. I don't care if it's a t-shirt. I don't care if it's perfume, jewelry, an electronic good, whatever it is, but guarantee there's somebody else out there that they're selling it. And there's another one and another one. And now you look and there's 30 plus sellers selling it. And you guys are fighting among each other in terms of who's going to sell it for the best price. Some people will say, oh, no, the market's not saturated. But in different areas, there it is saturated, okay? It is, I mean, if you do your research, and there's no way one man or one woman can do research on every single A to B D thing out there. But when you do do research every now and again, you are going to come across those products that are saturated. You will also come across those products that the average Joe is not going to be allowed to sell. You're going to have to have certain business licensing. You're going to have to be able to purchase thousands and thousands of items like a huge warehouse full <laughs> there are those um products that are out there like i know for instance when one of my sons was interested in apple products i'm like uh, that ain't happening <laughs> you see there's authorized dealers there are a lot of um you know rules and so forth that are involved with selling some of these brands you know and some folks, they have their way of doing some things that are shady. And I'm not one for supporting that. And then, of course, we have talked about um, just a number of things that we can do when it comes to these um, different e-com business models and so forth. But at the end of the day, it boils down to what you want to do. And some of my small business owners that are out there who have tried all sorts of things that I've talked about today, they end up finding themselves kind of contemplating on just going back to work because it's just too much. So, you know, this product was a flop. This product got called back. Um, you know, I don't have enough of this product and this was my money maker. They run into a lot of things and then they don't know what they're going to do. And this is why a lot of individuals end up being teachers, you know, but then some of us, we got other stuff that we're doing as well. This just happens to be just something fun to do, to share information with people about what is currently out there, what people are talking about, you know, what's the whisper, whisper. So, you know, you got to figure out what it is that you want to do as far as that second, third, fourth source of income. There are so many different ways of getting it, but you've got to have a mindset for wanting it. And sometimes we don't when we're dealing with family members and we're dealing with friends and we're dealing with work and we're dealing with, you know, maintaining household and handling other people's hobbies, interests and whatever else they got going on. 
So you do what you can tolerate. And maybe this isn't the season right now. You're just gleaning information. But whatever it is, just so long, or whatever the timing is, just so long as you know what you can tolerate, what you can handle. And don't go along with what everybody else is doing. Because a lot of times what everybody else is doing, as I found out the hard way, is telling some exaggerations and some lies, some of them. Okay? And I don't like that. All right. Well, please do tune in to the next resource rundown where I run down some more information that hopefully will help some of you all. Bless and see you.